Hello, good morning and welcome to St Catherine by the Sea, Holworth, for morning prayer on Saturday the 24th of November. We use the common worship daily prayer and its provision for all saints to Advent can be found towards the beginning of the book after prayer during the day. Then there's morning and evening prayer for the ordinary time and seasons and at the end of the seasons section, the morning and evening prayer provision for all saints till Advent, also known as Christ the King. O Lord, open our lips. And, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make, make known the, the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, God forever. forever. I shall read this one for us yeah. also. A song of trust in God. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now, when I think on these things, I pour out my soul. How I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God, with the voice of praise and thanksgiving, among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? O put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory, Glory to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it as was at the beginning, beginning, is now, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. <clears throat> the night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So we turn to the back of our red books to the Psalter, and which today the appointed psalmody is number 78. Number 78, perhaps you'll be pleased to hear it's only the first 39 verses. <laughs> And I guess we'll be completing it this evening. So we open and close this section with the refrain as given, saying the glory be before we conclude with the repetition of the refrain. And we may use the prayer that follows in silence if we choose. So it's Psalm 78, verses 1 to 39. O Lord, how glorious are your works. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will pour forth mysteries from a bell. Such as we have heard and known, which our forebears have told us. We will not hide from, our, from their children, but will recount to generations to come. The praises of the Lord and his power and the wonderful works that he has done. He laid a solemn charge on Jacob and made it a law in Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children. That the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in turn might tell to their children. So that they might put their trust in God, and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. And not be like their forebears, a stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation whose heart was not steadfast and whose spirit was not faithful to God. A people of <clears throat> Ephraim armed with the bow turned back in the day of battle. 
They did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. For he did marvellous things in the sight of their forebears, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand still in a heap. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a blaze of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness. He gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the rock and made water gush out like rivers. Yet for all this they sinned more against him and defied the Most High in the wilderness. They tested God in their hearts and demanded food for their craving. They spoke against God and said, Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? He struck the rock indeed so that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. But he can give bread or provide meat for his people. But can he give bread or provide meat for his people? When the Lord heard this, he was full of wrath. A fire was kindled against Jacob, and his anger went out against Israel. But they had no faith in God, and put no trust in his saving help. So he commanded the clouds above, and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down upon them manna to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He sent them food in plenty. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and let out the south wind by his might. He rained flesh upon them as thick as dust and winged fowl like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and round about their tents. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they desired. But they did not stop their craving. Their food was still in their mouths. When the anger of God rose against them, and slew their strongest men and felled the flower of Israel. But for all this they sinned yet more, and put no faith in his wondrous works. So he brought their days to an end like a breath, and their years in sudden terror. Whenever he slew them, they would seek him. They would repent and earnestly search for God. They remembered that God was their rock and the most high God their redeemer. Yet they did not flatter him with their mouth and dissembled with their tongue. Their heart was not steadfast towards him, neither were they faithful to his covenant. But he was so merciful that he gave forgave them their misdeeds and did not destroy them. Many a time he turned back his wrath and did not suffer his whole displeasure to be roused. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes by and does not return. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it as was in the beginning, beginning is now and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. O oh Lord, Lord, how glorious Lord, are your works. So we turn back to the canticle song of the new creation. <clears throat> I, will I will make, make a way, way in the wilderness, wilderness and, and rivers in the desert. desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing new things. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. The people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it as was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and shall be forever. Amen. I will, I will make, make a way, way in the wilderness, wilderness 
and rivers in the desert. And so we now turn to the scripture for Daniel chapter 12. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish such as never occurred since the nations first came into existence. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like brightness of the sky, and those who lead many so righteousness like the stars for ever and ever. But you, Daniel, keep the words secret and the book sealed until the time of end. Many shall be running back and forth, and evil shall increase. Then I, Daniel, looked with two other, and two others appeared, one standing on the bank of the stream, and one on the other. One of them said to the man clothed in linen, who was upstream, How long shall it be until the end of these wonders? The man clothed in linen, who was upstream, raised his right hand and his left hand towards heaven. I heard him swear by one who lives forever that it would be for a time, two times and half a time, and that when the, sh and that when the shattering of the power of the holy people comes to an end, all these things will be accomplished. I heard but could not understand, so I said, my Lord, what shall be the outcome of these things? He said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are to remain secret and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall be purified, cleansed and refined, but the wicked shall continue to act wickedly. None of the wicked shall understand, but those who are wiser shall understand. From the time that the regular burnt offering is taken away and the abomination that desolates is set up, there should be 1,290 days. Happy are those who persevere and attain the 1,335 days. But you go your way and rest. You shall rise for your reward at the end of the days. Thank you. <clears throat> so some of the stuff we've been reading in Daniel and in Revelation is a coded way of talking about the fact that the trials there and then would be resolved. Uh, uh, but also it's possible to interpret that as referring to the end of the days but this passage you just read yeah. seems to be much more actually the end of the end because mm. um, it talks about people who are sleeping in the dust of the earth awaking, some to everlasting life, some to everlasting contempt. Um, and it's difficult to try and read into that some sort of contemporary um, yeah. message. Um, so I guess this is probably the end of the end. Uh, but I... 
I haven't looked at any studies recently, but these time periods are also, I guess, significant. Um, both that time, two times and half a time, and the um, 1,290 days and the 335 days, I can't imagine people, precise. <laughs> people spend ages working out what all that <coughs> means. Um, but the one thing that I guess we could attribute to Rome, I guess, if it was written then, so the regular burnt offering is taken away and the abomination that desolates is set up. Yeah. Um, so they would have cleared the temple out and perhaps put their banners and things in there. Um, assuming that this was written at that sort of a time about Daniel set in the time of the exile because some of the things that they stood up for in exile would have applied to the Jews standing up against Rome. Yeah. Um, but it wouldn't then have been taken away by the Romans as seditious, if that's the right word. So, our next reading is Revelation 13, from 11 to the end. Revelation 13, 11 to the end. I guess it does show that they are Jews, were Jews, who believed in the resurrection when Jesus was about, yeah, and Paul was about. Is it Sadducees? And mm. The Pharisees Sadducees, were... Yeah, sorry, it's Pharisees did, Sadducees did. Yeah. Yeah. I, didn't, I only get that because they're sad because they didn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yes. Yeah, yeah, very good. So, Revelation, which is it? Uh, 13, 13, 11 to the end. Right. Then I saw another beast that rose out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf, <clears throat> and it makes the earth and the inhabitants worship the first beast, whose, whose mortal wound had been healed. It performs great signs and taking fire and making fire come down from heaven in the sight of all. And by the signs that it is is allowed to perform on behalf of the beast. It deceives the inhabitants of the earth, <clears throat> telling them to make an image for the beast that has been wounded by the sword and yet lived. And it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast can speak and cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. It also causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell who does not have the mark, that is, the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let anyone with understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a person. Its number is 666. Thank you. Yes, I have been talking about the beast as being representation of a, um, like a, an empire, but I'm not quite sure how these various beasts, because we've now got three, we've got the original beast and this another beast that speaks like a dragon. I'm not quite sure what that would sound like, <laughs> <laughs> apart from the Listerine dragon. Um, <laughs> it's probably not what's intended. Um, and then the uh, this image of a beast, which is only an image, but still has breath. Like a clone. Yes. Or um, like a sort of a puppet state, yeah. that kind of a thing. I think that's the way to interpret it. Although the thought went through my mind, maybe the first beast was like false Judaism, but I don't think that's right. I think it's got to be like civil powers, if you like, I think. Mm. Um, and various people have worked out because uh, Hebrew numbers, unlike Arabic, I mean, Arab, uh, what am I saying? Mm. A Arabic uh, numbers, I uh, know. Jewish letters have a numeric value, I think yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah, the letter numbers. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
so whereas we have Arabic numerals in English, and so our letters, unless we use them in a Roman kind of sense, don't have value. Yeah. But uh, I think the Hebrew letters are used for counting. I don't know whether that's right or not. Anyway, the, well, they the only one I know is DWD, which is four six four, uh, because that I um, remember that being explained by somebody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because DWD was David. Okay. Four six four. And that, I think it's the beginning of Matthew. I think I'll have to. Yeah. I'll now have to look it up. <laughs> okay, so that's yeah. what you call yourself if you wanted to remain anonymous. I suppose it could. Yes, of course it is. Yes. Yeah, so that's like this, and I, I have heard it or read it said that six hundred and sixty-six was Nero. One of those sort of yeah. Roman. I don't know how it works, yeah. but anyway. Yeah. So. Uh, but it's also double gods. The six is twice three, and three is God's number, but I don't know. Mm. Um, it's just a sort of basically, it's a fearful time. I think yeah. it's uh, all we can really pull out of that. And apparently, all-consuming pressure to conform, even not even be able to buy or sell, being put to death if we don't worship the beast. Yeah, so it's taken us over completely. Yeah. Yeah, living in a sort of totalitarian state. Yeah. That's an application for us, indeed. Yeah. And not sort of standing up or, you know, just putting up with what's being done. So should we turn back to morning prayer then for the responsory? I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Yes, I am. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips, My lips shall, shall proclaim your faithfulness. faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I, I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My, My lips, lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The Song of Zechariah. You will guide us with your counsel, O God, and afterwards receive us with glory. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through, Through his, his holy, holy prophets, prophets God, God promised of old to save, save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show, show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You will guide us with your counsel, O God, and afterwards receive us with glory. Let us pray. Lord of the Sabbath, Prince of Peace, Comforter and Advocate, three and one, one in three. Once again we come to you on this day of rest, the day when your body rested in the grave and so hallowed it. <clears throat> the day when you rested after your work of creation. The day when we, a day when we may rest to demonstrate our faithfulness in your provision. And we pray that we will receive and know your rest in our anxiety, in our striving, in our mourning. And we pray for those 
who are unable to rest as we may, as they may be working in hospitality, medicine, military, emergency services, communications, utilities. We pray that they in their turn, through adequate terms and conditions, will have their time to rest, to express themselves with family, friends, and in creativity, in sports and hob hobbies, that they may live fulfilled lives. And we also pray for those whose lives are such that they do not know rest, maybe in abusive relationships, falsely imprisoned, in pain or in concern about health and prospects, short of money, insecure in work or relationship or accommodation. Those who are away from home, internally displaced, or who have left for foreign lands for fear of their lives or to support family back home. We thank you that for all of these, you may be their rest. You may be their place of belonging. And where they place their faith, that is their home. I pray that they may know that, that we may know that also, this day and every day. Amen. The prayer that's been left for us to consider, um, the person actually refers to Psalm 19. I am currently on a journey, walking and listening to God through nature. Please pray that I may discern God's word spoken through nature to me. And this is written by someone called Klyn, K-L-Y-N-N. I did read Psalm 19 is essentially talking about nature and God talking or speaking through nature. So we pray for Klim and pray that you will make yourself known to him and that he may be aware of you. Amen. Amen. Operation World, some prayers for Turkey. We thank you that towards the end of the last century there was renewed church growth. We thank you for the Association of Protestant Churches there to support that, at least on the Protestant side. We pray that there will be strong relationships between and within churches especially they often support people who have had to leave family on the grounds of their faith. And we pray for the development of expressions of faith that are Turkish and are also Catholic and Orthodox standard in their understanding. And we pray for the wider nation that the government will have wisdom and courage as it faces in two directions, towards Europe and towards the Middle East, as it struggles to balance nationalism and Islamism, as it uh, part of the former, its relationship with Europe as the European Union. And so we pray for strength and wisdom, and also for um, human rights, freedom of expression, of association and religion, for all that live in that land. Amen. From Christian Action Church and Education, we pray for those who have gifts, passion and anointing to preach the gospel of grace and truth so people may understand who Christ is, confess their needs for forgiveness, etc., and receive new life. And that life being one of beloved and belonging, becoming as disciples. Amen. <coughs> From 
Green Christian. 15 years of research at Essex University into benefits activities in natural places have resulted in the manifesto for a green mind, calling for changes that would deliver health benefits for all. The way we live now is killing people in affluent countries through cardiovascular disease, etc., costing the NHS 60 billion a year. The proposals suggest every child spends time outside every day, every adult is act physically active every day, every adult learns a new skill or craft throughout life, every care home has a garden, every hospital is redesigned on greener pro-social principles. They quote, a wandering mind is unhappy and stressed, tending to visit memories of the past and we imagine scenarios of the future. We now know that there is an off switch, but it requires certain behaviour to be attentive, mindful and immersed in something, whether it be a walk, gardening, knitting, crosswords, tai chi or your local book club, all activities that burn a few of the earth's resources, but bring well-being and happiness. That's from Jules Pretty, who I have heard speak. I have to say, for those of us living in this part of the world with our lifestyles, it seems extraordinary that we need to yes. have a policy to encourage physical activity or the application of our minds to skills and crafts. But I guess that just shows how far it is generally needed. some life has gone. So we pray that uh, all who are working to that end um, will have success in achieving them. And uh, moving to our benefice cycle of prayer, we thank you for our food bank, Women's Refuge, Credit Union and other local charities. We pray they'll continue to be able to survive, uh, not least through um, revenue funding, which is often very difficult to um, sustain um, over against capital funding which uh, for new projects which can raise funds from private and larger donators and uh, trust funds. And so we pray for their staff and those that they care for. Um, that their, their clients' lives will be changed for the better and that their staff, frontline volunteers and uh, the committee and director level will have uh, the strength of mind and purpose to take those charities forward so that their good work can continue to be a benefit to our local communities. We thank you for our church membership today for Anne, Cyril, Cynthia, Carol, Jack, Lisa, Jack, Dulcie, Beth, Alex, Celia, Jeff, John, Keith, Anne, Chris, Kathleen, Elizabeth, Michael, Leslie, Kevin, Peter, Liz, Noel, Alison, Graham, Suzanne, Tessa, Laura, Pat, Richard, Liz and Tony as half of those in Ermoyne. We pray your blessings of health, wealth, prosperity, salvation, healing and deliverance on them. We thank you for their contribution to the lives of their communities in time, faith, money, talents. We pray that with them you build us up into fuller experience and understanding of faith. Give us a hope and a hunger and a thirst for you in our study, in our prayer, in our service. And as others see the difference that you make in us, that they will be drawn to faith in you, that they may share the um, sustenance, the assurance that we enjoy through your work in us. Amen. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <laughs> Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.